Meet the Nimitz class. The U.S. Navy's aircraft carrier worth $8.5 billion, a floating fortress, and a technological marvel. These giant vessels are game changers, deterring potential threats and ensuring the unrestricted use of the seas. From launching aircraft that strike targets in the air, on land, and at sea, to participating in maritime security, disaster response, and humanitarian missions, Nimitz-class carriers are the backbone of U.S. naval power. Join us as we explore what makes these carriers extraordinary and why the U.S. finally has to say goodbye to these fantastic beasts despite their power and grandeur. The Nimitz-class aircraft carriers, a fleet of 10 magnificent vessels, represent the United States' superpower status. These giants of the sea are unmatched weapons platforms that surpass all competition. The carriers in this elite class include the USS Nimitz, USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, USS Carl Vinson, USS Theodore Roosevelt, USS Abraham Lincoln, USS George Washington, USS John C. Stennis, USS Harry S. Truman, USS Ronald Reagan, and USS George H. W. Bush. Kicking off this impressive lineup is the USS Nimitz, affectionately known as Old Salt. Commissioned in May 1975, it was named after Admiral Chester Nimitz, a vital leader of the US Navy during World War II. On the other hand, the last in the series, USS George H. W. Bush, joined the fleet in January 2009 these supercarriers stretch a staggering 1,092 feet, making them more than three times the length of a football field. Housing over 5,000 crew members, these ships are essentially floating cities. Now, what powers these colossal carriers? Two A4W nuclear reactors, each in its separate compartment. These reactors heat water through nuclear fission to produce steam, which then powers four turbines. The power generated is transferred to four propeller shafts via a gearbox, giving these giants a top speed of over 30 knots and a whopping 260,000 brake horsepower. These turbines drive the four massive bronze propellers, each 25 feet in diameter and weighing 66,000 pounds. Guiding the ships are two rudders, each standing 29 feet high and 22 feet long. Thanks to nuclear power, these carriers can operate non-stop for over 20 years without refueling, with a projected service life of over 50 years. With a displacement of 104,000 tons, all these warships were built by Huntington Ingalls Industries' Newport News Shipbuilding in Virginia, each costing around $8.5 billion. Powerhouse in the sky. But the true might of a carrier lies in its air wing, during the Cold War, the air wing was significantly larger than today. Back in the 1980s, a typical carrier air wing boasted two squadrons of 12 F-14 Tomcat fighters, two squadrons of 12 F-A-18 Hornet fighters, a squadron of 10 A-6 intruder bombers, and a squadron of 4-6 E-2 Hawkeye early warning planes. Additionally, there were 10 S-3 Viking anti-submarine planes, 4 EA-6B Prowler electronic warfare planes, and 6 SH-3 anti-submarine helicopters. With slight variations, the average Nimitz-class carrier carried between 85 to 90 aircraft during that era. Fast forward to today, and the carrier air wing looks quite different. It's now designed for broad striking power far from the carrier's position, while providing deep defense for the battle group by detecting airborne, surface, and subsurface threats early. Modern carrier air wings consist of four strike fighter squadrons with 10 or 12 F-A-18 EF Super Hornets, or sometimes three Super Hornet squadrons and one squadron of 10 F-35C Lightning IIs, totaling over 40 strike fighters. They also include one electronic attack squadron comprising seven EA-18G Growlers. Furthermore, one carrier airborne early warning squadron has four E-2C Hawkeyes or five E-2D advanced Hawkeyes. 
The Air Wing also includes one helicopter Sea Combat Squadron with eight MH-60S Seahawks and one helicopter Maritime Strike Squadron with 11 MH-60R Seahawks, with a few based on other ships in the Carrier Strike Group. A Fleet Logistics Support Squadron detachment, consisting of two C-2A Greyhounds, is also part of the Air Wing. In 2021, the new CMV-22B Osprey began replacing the C-2A Greyhounds, adding a new dimension to fleet logistics and multi-mission capabilities. Unyielding Defenses Besides their impressive aircraft fleet, Nimitz-class carriers are packed with an array of advanced weapon systems. First up, we have two or three Mark 29 guided missile launchers. These can fire RIM-1 62 Evolved Sea Sparrow missiles or RIM-7 Sea Sparrow missiles ready to defend against incoming threats. Additionally, these carriers boast three or four Phalanx CIWs installations, each a six-barreled 20mm automated gun system capable of firing 3,000 rounds per minute. This incredible rate of fire ensures quick and effective neutralization of close-in threats making them a vital part of the carrier's defense. Moving on, two Mark 49 guided missile launchers are also on board, each able to launch RIM-116 rolling airframe missiles. The RAM system is designed for rapid, close-in defense against anti-ship missiles, providing a fire-and-forget capability. To add to the close-in defense, Nimitz-class carriers are armed with Mark 38 25mm machine gun systems. These versatile guns can take on surface threats, including fast attack craft and enemy swimmers. Talk about the real powerful beast. The Battle Fleet. When a Nimitz-class carrier sets sail, it's never alone. It's accompanied by a carrier strike group, a formidable assembly of warships and support vessels that ensure the mission's success. The carrier relies primarily on short-range defensive weapons, serving as the last line of defense against missiles and aircraft. Given their high strategic value and the immense cost of building and replacing them, aircraft carriers are prime targets for enemy forces. Every carrier is accompanied by at least one submarine to protect against underwater threats. These submarines are crucial for safeguarding the carrier from enemy submarines lurking below the waves. The other ships in the strike group bring additional firepower and defense capabilities, such as long-range Tomahawk missiles and the Aegis combat system, which provides robust protection against various threats. A typical strike group might include up to six surface combatants, such as guided missile cruisers and destroyers. These ships specialize in anti-aircraft and anti-submarine warfare, before their retirement, frigates also played a vital role in these groups, and with the introduction of the new Constellation-class frigates, they will once again be part of the team. Alongside these combat vessels, the strike group includes one or two attack submarines dedicated to hunting down enemy ships and submarines. To keep the fleet operational, an ammunition, oiler, and supply ship provided by Military Sealift Command tags along, ensuring logistical support. The exact makeup of each strike group can vary depending on the mission and availability of vessels. Still, they all aim to protect the valuable aircraft carrier at their center. Farewell to the Giants The sun is beginning to set on the USS Nimitz, the oldest active aircraft carrier in the United States fleet. Initial plans for its deactivation are already underway. Nimitz-class carriers were built with a 50-year lifespan. When their time is up, they are decommissioned. The deactivation process for the USS Nimitz is estimated to cost between $750 and $900 million. For comparison, decommissioning a conventionally powered carrier costs around $53 million. The higher cost for the Nimitz is mainly due to the complexity of shutting down the nuclear power plants and safely removing radioactive materials and other contaminated equipment. According to the Navy's long-range shipbuilding plan presented to Congress in March 2023, the USS Nimitz is now slated for retirement in 2026. Earlier reports had suggested that the offloading process would start in 2025, with the ship officially inactivated by 2027. Following the Nimitz, the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower is scheduled for retirement the next year, with other Nimitz-class carriers lined up for their turn in the following years. As the Nimitz-class carriers prepare to bid farewell, 
the Navy has a plan for their successors. Over the next three decades, the cutting-edge Gerald R. Ford-class carriers will replace these legendary carriers one for one. As we look to the future, with the Gerald R. Ford-class carriers set to take over, one can't help but reflect on the Nimitz-class's legacy. From their awe-inspiring size and nuclear power to their sophisticated defense systems and impressive air wings, these carriers stand out in the maritime world. And it's safe to say that their impact on naval warfare and their role in protecting global interests will be remembered for generations. Now, we'd love to hear from you. What do you think about transitioning from the Nimitz class to the Gerald R. Ford class carriers? Do you believe the new class will live up to the legacy of its predecessor? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay updated with more fascinating stories about military technology and history, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to ring the bell icon so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching and see you next time.